Hello, Tom Sully, please. Who can I speak in? Yeah, hello. Um, I'd like to, to make an appointment to, to come in um, regarding a, a, an incident that occurred yesterday. Okay. Um, can I ask what the incident was? Um, it, it's of a domestic issue. I mean, uh, it's a serious domestic, if you want. The incident's of a serious nature. Yes, last night. Right. And you're you're both okay, are you? You're not. None of you are harmed at all, are you? Well, well, we have one one person is. Right. Okay. Is that person seeking any medical attention? Do you know? Do they need it? Uh, uh, no. No. But, uh, 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 and you've got children involved as well. Yes. My name is Robert Brown. And an address for you, please, Robert. It's, it's Springfield, North Street. This is the case of Joanna Simpson, murdered by her ex-husband Robert Brown with a hammer within earshot of her children. On the 1st of November 2010, a phone call was made to 999 by a person named Robert Brown who wanted to make an appointment because him and his ex-wife had had a domestic incident. It turned out this was a real emergency despite Robert Brown's calm demeanour on the phone. 47-year-old former airline captain Robert Brown had bludgeoned to death his 46-year-old ex-wife Joanna Simpson with a hammer at the mansion home they used to share together in Ascot by Great Windsor Park, attacking her as soon as he entered the property, striking her a minimum of 14 times over her head and face, killing her while their two children, who at the time were aged 9 and 10 years old, were in earshot in the next room. Even though their two children didn't witness the murder, they heard everything. Joanna Simpson met Robert Brown after divorcing her first husband. A friend had introduced her to Robert. However, when Joanna's family first met Brown, they disliked him instantly. Joanna was kind and loving, while Brown was the opposite. He was rude and arrogant. The couple went on to marry after a short engagement. However, prior to the marriage, Joanna's father believed their relationship wouldn't end well. He asked Brown to sign a prenuptial agreement to protect the wealthy trust fund he had set up for Joanna, and Robert agreed to sign it. It was on their honeymoon that Joanna confided to her mother that she had made a mistake in marrying Robert. At the time, she had told her mother that she witnessed Brown being rude to the hotel staff and she didn't like it. Joanna fell pregnant quickly, with her first child and then her second, and Joanna felt she had to stay with Brown for the sake of the children. The following years, the couple's relationship became toxic. He became controlling and would often put Joanna down. Joanna was often embarrassed by his rudeness. Brown once admitted to Joanna about having dark thoughts about killing her and the children with an axe or killing himself, and being an airline pilot, he once threatened to fly the plane and crash it. Another instant, Brown accused Joanna of having an affair and held a knife to her. She was scared for her safety and the safety of her children. Eventually, Joanna would file for divorce. Joanna offered him money to settle the divorce, but Brown always wanted more. He became obsessed with money. He felt like he was entitled to more. The divorce dragged on for three years. At the time of their divorce, Joanna was also the owner of a thriving five-star bed and breakfast in Ascot. Brown was angry that he wouldn't get a penny after their divorce and he had felt he had been stitched up with the prenuptial agreement. Brown had spent over £200,000 on improving their marital mansion home in Ascot. The house was in Joanna's name, which meant that Brown was set to be left with nothing after the divorce. You see, the couple's divorce was soon to be finalised and it was Halloween evening 2010 when Brown murdered Joanna. After having the children during the school holiday, Brown dropped off the children at their previous marital home in Ascot. His weapon of choice was a hammer, which he had hidden in the children's school bags. After killing Joanna, he wrapped her body with a plastic sheet and put a bin liner over her head, which he later told police this was to avoid leaving bloodstains. He loaded Joanna's body into the boot of his car and returned to the house to disconnect the phone and take out the CCTV. Brown drove their two children to his girlfriend's house and during the journey his son asked him if they were taking their mummy to hospital because both the children had heard the blows that Brown had inflicted on their mother. 
However, after leaving their children with his girlfriend, he drove to Windsor Great Park where he placed Joanna's body in a pre-prepared makeshift box which he used as a coffin and buried her in a six foot deep grave which he had spent months digging. The following day, Brown was due back at work. He had a long haul scheduled flight from London to Lagos. Fortunately, he called in sick and made the 999 call to the police. Joanna's body was discovered five days later when Brown eventually took the police to the site. She was wrapped in plastic in the box crate, bound with straps and garden ties. Her face was unrecognisable. Brown's daughter told police that she had heard her parents hitting each other and then she watched as her dad put mum in the car. Blood drops were found on the driveway of the Ascot home and blood splatter in the hallway. The trial began in May 2011 in Reading Crown Court. Brown pleaded not guilty. He testified in court that he lost it and that he just burst and blew and the next thing I remember, I was standing over Joe, and there was blood all over the place. Despite evidence that Brown pre-planned the murder, preparing his car for transporting Joanna's body, bringing the bin liners and plastic sheet and hammer, and pre-digging the grave months before at Windsor Great Park, where Brown had taken the children with him, leaving them to play nearby at the den that he built for them, while he prepared the hole he dug to serve as their mother's grave. Brown was acquitted of murder by a jury. It was believed that the jury may have been swayed by the fact that Brown was a trusted airline pilot. He had put on a show crying and apologising in court. However, Joanna's family have said that this was the only time that Brown had ever apologised. Brown pleaded guilty to manslaughter by reasons of diminished responsibility due to adjustment disorder from suffering severe stress. He was sentenced to 24 years for the manslaughter conviction and a further two years for obstructing a coroner in the execution of his duty. Brown would have been eligible for automatic release on a licence after 13 years in November 2023 after only serving half of his sentence. Joanna's mother, Diana Parks, and her best friend, Hetty Bankworth Nanton, campaigned tirelessly against his automatic release. They have fought hard for this not to happen. Diana has claimed that Joanna's family and friends are all in fear for their safety if he is released and the safety of any women Brown may come in contact with. A change in the law recently meant that the Secretary of State for Justice, Alex Chalk, was able to block Brown's automatic release and he has referred Brown's case to the Parole Board for review. The parole board is there to protect the public from dangerous offenders. They will look at details of Joanna's case and assess if Brown is a risk of harm to the public if he is released early. If he is deemed a risk, this will be reviewed annually. This was an absolutely appalling case. Anybody who's heard about the story of uh, Robert Brown and Joanne Simpson cannot fail to be affected by the appalling nature of it and how harrowing it is and I pay tribute uh, to Joanna's mother uh, and to Joanna's friends for the um, tireless campaign they've made. So I made an undertaking to them that I would do everything I properly and lawfully could to ensure that justice was done in this case and that's why using the powers that are available under the 2022 Act I have exercised my discretion to block his automatic release which would otherwise have happened his case will now be referred to the parole board for them to make a determination about whether he's safe to be released. So he would otherwise have walked out, made this decision. That was the right one to do, having considered all the evidence personally and with care. Joanna is remembered as a loving mother to her two children, and her friends and family say she was a kind-hearted person who loved being outdoors. Her mother Diana says that Joanna was a very driven person. After Joanna's death, her two children were brought up by Diana. The Joanna Simpson Foundation was set up by her family to help support and protect children who have been affected by domestic abuse, violence or murder. Thank you for watching. If you found this video educational, please like and subscribe, stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.